Hello everybody, welcome to a new video from Sound From O. It's Leo speaking. Today I would like to introduce you to Specializer, a fantastic new um, effect, a UV3 compatible. You can use that to augment uh, large scale reverb, adding reflection. You can use that to uh, really widening your stereo sounds. It's very good if you want to keep that MIDI mid channel unaltered so quite um, a great uh, stereo stereo widening um audio unit um not really your traditional uh, digital reverb which uh, is quite nice so as i mentioned it's an auv free compatible as you would expect it supports uh, um sampling rate like 44 48 96 kilohertz and i know that quantavox is going to add uh, additional support uh, for other sampling rates moving forward as well. Um, before I continue, I have uh, also a giveaway um, courtesy of uh, Quantavox. So just check the video description for the instruction how to participate uh, to the giveaway. And if indeed, if it is still open or if uh, winners have been already announced. I, I would also like to remind viewers to subscribe to the channel as that helps with bringing more videos, tutorials and uh, also giveaways. So let's start. I'm inside uh, AUM, um, my, one of my favorite audio mixer or my favorite audio mix, I would say. As you can see, I have loaded uh, a specializer on a number of audio channels with different instruments because I just want to show you how it performs uh, with different type of sounds. And you need to really pay closer attention to the type of uh, sounds that is coming in on the input because of course um, in, you probably don't gain too much if you have something like an instrument like a staccato or you have rapid decay or you already have hard punning in the input uh, you have a lot of um, uh, I would say um, effects uh, already applied right at the front so just something to um, to pay attention to um, so I'm going to start with uh, a synth the four-way synth so I'm going to connect to it and um, let's start uh, first to hear uh, uh, sorry not this one this one and let's start to hear first um, what it sounds like without the effect. So I'm not going to concentrate on the melody, etc., just purely on the sound. So that is what it sounds without the effect. So now let's uh, turn on the effect and also open the specializer. So you can hear straight away a big difference. Of course, uh, make sure you have headphones. If you don't, uh, it would be very difficult for you to capture those subtle differences in the sound. So as you can see, also you have a nice uh, visualization in uh, in the middle, which is not quite nice. This radio visualization, uh, okay. You can change that to scope. When you're on in scope, you see other parameters changes. So in this case, you have auto, but if you disable auto, you can zoom in and out as you preference so you can see i'm changing i'm zooming in or you can have an auto and you can also add marks like so i quite like actually the direction here and you can have it as radio which is really really nice and you can add track positioning which is really really good and you can also add change the window size you can see the difference from 200 millisecond to 50 milliseconds in terms of the response time so this visualization is really really nice and as i mentioned you, uh, you can have other modes you have front and back really nice and also with left and right but personally i like the radio visualization so in terms of the effect you have amount So you can hear the difference as I'm increasing the amount. You have time scale, and this is where uh, you can decide how to change the characteristics of the effects, right? So if you have something above uh, 100 on the time scale, it will give you more that acoustic effect. If it is uh, just around 100 below, 
uh, 100, you have more uh, the spatial effect. And if it is much lower, something like um, below probably um, 10, you have something more uh, like experimental, which you can probably um, say what it sounds like. So let me try. I like to have it uh, either on just below 100 or just above 100 to have that acoustic effect. You can impact the decay, really, and um, and I'll show you different uh, instruments how we react to that. You can hear the difference. You can decide to balance the input left and right. Double click to go back to the um, original um, setting or just move it uh, to like so to L0 or L0 okay to the center then you have a little bit of a cue here on the right top and side on the low frequency higher frequency as well high you can decide also to change the presence level you can hear that better when you have uh, more EQ on high frequencies. And indeed, you can also change uh, the settings to go in certain mode so you can hear the effects only. And the gate time here is um, purposely, the purpose of the gate uh, setting is really to control the side channel when you don't have the um, signal on the mid channel so it comes quite handy and of course you can activate or deactivate the effect okay so that uh, just a quick introduction to the using interface and the different settings Hopefully that uh, has been useful. So now let's uh, listen to how the effect performs using different instruments. So let's connect the AUM keyboard to the Swarm Ultra Trombone um, instrument. So this is what it sounds like without the effect. <laughs> Really nice, really nice, particularly if you manage to use uh, this instrument uh, uh, using uh, a keyboard which allows you MPE or additional settings, uh, like in this case, to drive the vibrato depth moving up and down. <laughs> Okay, so that is what it sounds like. So let's add the uh, special effects. And let's go back to the AUM keyboard. So you can uh, hear how much wider the sound is. And let me change some parameters. I'm not going to um, mention all of them, but if you look where my cursor is and what I'm changing, so you have a feel what uh, I'm doing with the effect. Okay, so let's go to a different instrument. So let's uh, connect now an electric piano, like so. Okay, so uh, it sounds like this.
Okay, let's introduce the effect now. So really, really nice. Again, let's change some of the parameters to give you a bit of the feel. Okay, let's uh, increase a little bit more time scale, have more reflection. Okay, really nice, really nice. So let's now go to something uh, more vocal. So let's try to use uh, Pipa, so which uh, fantastic uh, app as well. So I just selected uh, something like a choir, but just uh, not a normal one. So let's see. Let's see what it sounds like. So it has a bit of movement. So let's add the specializer. Let's change some of the parameters. Always useful to hear in send mode what it sounds like. Okay, so that is an example of what it sounds like using something like um, um, more a vocal type of sound. So let's try now uh, something with digitalism. Okay, and um, uh, we I have some strings here, which could be nice to hear what they sound like without and with the effect. <laughs> Okay, now let's add the effect. So you can hear how uh, we have uh, augmented what was already applied to the strings, which is really nice. So you can hear in this case the difference is just changing the decay. Again, if you have headphones on, of course. And this one, will, this instrument, particularly with uh, a lot of EQ on high frequency, give you a perfect sense of what is happening if you have headphones on, of course, changing the presence settings. So you can hear that the fact the presence is coming more alive. So really, really, really nice. And lastly, I wanted to show you what it sounds like with a clean guitar, which has been recorded. Uh, by one uh, of the Sound for More channel subscribers. So let's play for it first. <laughs> okay, and then let's add the effect in. So I play first 
without the effect and then introduce the effect. So you can notice the difference. Okay, as uh, you can hear, um, it uh, it's quite a change in terms of, of widening your uh, sound. Really, really a nice effect. It's superb, actually. Works extremely well. It is recommended that in iOS you have something like at least an A8 as a processor. In this case, I have an A9, so I'm not that far from an A8. I'm using an iPad fifth generation, so hopefully you have been able to see also what the DSP was right at the top here in AUM in terms of percentage of CPU utilized. But I have loaded quite quite a bit as well in AUM, but hopefully that gave you an indication as well how it is performing. It is performing quite well because now a fifth generation iPad is uh, uh, quite old. And so if you have one of the latest iPad with an A12 uh, or above, uh, obviously fantastic. But as you can see, it is performing really, really well also with an A9 as a processor inside an iPad. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the demonstration and uh, the short tutorial, and um, I'm sure you will uh, find the effect um, a great addition to your arsenal of uh, audio unit effects inside the iOS uh, ecosystem. Okay, see you in the next video. Bye.